Hey guys, I was just getting on for a few minutes before I, I got a lot, I got some work to do over at the studio. So I just decided to get on a few minutes to talk to y'all to see who was on. I know it's Saturday, but it's almost six o'clock though. Text her back, send her message back. Um, hey, uh, our Kenny, you doing okay? Um, who is that? Oscar Mason. I can't believe it's almost six o'clock. I just wanted to get on here because I, I got a show to do and then I gotta edit some shows um from the people that's on my network of course that's got tv shows over here i want to say a little bit about my bit because i never really say a whole lot hey miss angela massey and, and what is it angelisa um i never really say a whole lot about my business i do have a production company and my production company air shows on comcast channel 31 that's tamra's productions and um i guess i don't talk a whole lot about it because i have so much going on but um i guess i'm supposed to hey marco frazier always be talking about you know what i have going on i guess i'd be from one thing to the next so much but i do have a tv show i do produce my own tv show on 31 as well as other tv shows on 31. now there are some shows that's on 31 that i don't produce that's not up under tamra's productions um hey robert washington but um but i do have a tv show like i produce commercials like if you want to be a, a a commercial for your business and and i tell people all the time you have to get commercials done like done like promos and things of that nature so that people can know what you have going on so you know a lot of times we don't want to put money into what we have going on and we wonder why it's stagnant nobody knows what you do until you show them what you do until you put money into what you do like having something produced to show them and also the only thing that makes your business stand out from other business businesses is for people to see your business that's why i say put it on tv because i have so many people that look at my show you know on my on saturday mornings i do uh, from set on saturday mornings from 10 until 12 i do a gospel video show and then um, I have Wings of Love that comes on at 9.30. That's their TV show. They talk about their nonprofit organization. They get people to donate to them because they see what they have going on. And they pay for their slot. You know, slots usually aren't a lot. <clears throat> also, I have, um, hey, Mr. Killebrew. I have IBEW Local 1288. They do a lot for the community. They're able to let people know they're using their show as a vehicle to show people what they have going on <coughs> with their union. <clears throat> Y'all, I guess I'm trying to get a lot. Yeah, listen, I always get summer colds. I don't catch colds in the wintertime. I catch colds in the summertime. I just can't understand what's, what's, what's the problem, but I always did from a child. But hey, Darius Ross. But um, <clears throat> hey, my auntie on here, Jacqueline Smith. But that's how you show people what you have going on. Is to put it on TV. It's a reasonable price. Give me a call. You can come over here to my studio. I can produce it. Or if you want a commercial and you want to do a little snippet where you can put on Facebook or whatever, just to show people if you can't afford to put it on TV, which the prices are very reasonable, you know, call me and we can produce you a commercial because that's what I do. That's what I tell people. <clears throat> Now, my show, like I said, I come on Saturday mornings from 10 to 12, Sunday nights from 7.30 um, until 9.30, um, Mondays 6 to 7, Wednesdays 6 to 7, and then I produce other shows that come on. But um, mostly on my shows, which is what I'm getting ready to do now, I do missing person shows and I do cold case homicide shows. Of course, I, everybody knows that I covered the Lorenzo Rice case um, bef before it even crunk up again. I was always on, on that, on top of that case, of course. And his mother, I ain't trying to toot my own horn, but um, 
I think other than the national media, I'm the only person that his family has trusted to give an interview in the Mid-South area. Um, because with me, as far as my inter my interviews, and, and see, I think that's why so many families trust me. Because I always tell them, listen, I'm not going to twist your words. I do things because I want results, not because I want ratings just ratings or whatever i do it because i want results and i think that's why the families kind of stick to me even after um the cases are solved or whatever because they know that i'm genuine about what i do it's just my calling that's what i love to do i love mystery shows i love to do shows of and keep things like that out there and i'm getting ready to um do an update on desmond more now me and his mother has become that's my sister it's it's just funny how when you meet people you know you think you're gonna do and just do interviews with them but she and i have been um yeah excuse me while i put on my gloss i hope i hope this ain't unprofessional but i'm, I'm kind of getting ready to go on air too and um but Desmond Moore went missing down in Goche, Mississippi. That's a little small town in Mississippi. And um, he went missing after his going to meet some friends at the Pizza Hut that was up the road. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people say it shouldn't be racial. We, we shouldn't make things racial. But when it's racial, we have to call it out. You know, I think by trying to deny something you know, I mean, it, it don't make it not be that. But Desmond's friends were um, Caucasian um, young men, and um, their families were politicians, if I'm not mistaken. And um, something had gone on, but he was supposed to go up there to meet them. And he was never seen again. And um, it was some problem. One of his friends, there was issues with one of them that he was having because from what his mom says on the show, he had been dodging one of the young men. And um, I think they, they've heard him. You know, it's been about four or five years. So they, they, they heard him. And the Goche Mississippi Police Department is covering it up, you know. So I'm going to do an update on that show. Um because we, we definitely want to keep that out there, you know, what they've done, what has happened to Desmond, you know, maybe somebody will come forward because someone always knows, you know, there's someone that always knows. There are other um, shows that I'm working on doing, and it would be more so to, um, there's just some other stuff that I'm working on you know, as far as, as, as far as my TV show. Um, like I said, investigative stuff. That's just my thing. That's, that's just what I do. Like I can, if there's ever anything to find out, I'm going to find it. Thank you, boo, Miss Alexandra. The lashes. I got I my, um, her name is Elizabeth Cox. And she try, she she'll come to you. She does lashes. She is off of the chain. That's my boo. And I'm very and it's funny because when I met her, she was working at the um she was working at the uh, jewelry box. And my friend, my sister Ellen owns the jewelry box and she owns trinkets. So make sure y'all go over there. And Ellen was like, I told Ellen, I said, Ellen, you got a girl in there. I went in there and got my lashes done and I love them. And she said, Well, um, she was like, girl, I'm going to let her know that, um, that she was like, I'm going to let her know because you so picky that it's hard to please you. I was like, I love her. So she comes over here to my, my studio and does my lashes too. She probably logged on. Hey, Elizabeth, her name is Elizabeth Cox. Um, she's so sweet. She's so freaking sweet. I be trying to support. I be wanting to see everybody support. You know what I mean? Even with my little creepy little self because I'm a little creepy because I like crime stuff. You know, I like to solve mysteries that's why my shows are are centered around like missing persons and cold case homicides but i tell people all the time that um i'm gonna send you her information to alexandria i tell people all the time that that's my calling everybody has a calling and my calling is crime shows 
like doing cold case homicide shows, doing missing person shows, even when people was talking about me for um, making fun of me for keeping the story alive about Lorenzen Wright, even when it was cold. That was, I actually developed a relationship with Lorenz's mother because I could feel her heart. That lady was hurt every time she walked over here and I would always have to walk into the studio. I would always have to stop and edit. Like I, those shows were edited like crazy because Lorenzen's mother could not keep herself together and I couldn't either because of the pain of knowing what had happened to her son and not being able to do anything about it. But here's the thing, she's very outspoken. She's very outspoken. So we did a whole lot of editing to keep the lawsuits away, praise the Lord. But um, <clears throat> but um, but she always knew what it was. And for me, it's unfortunately it's unfortunate what happened to Lorenz and Wright. But I'm so happy because I've developed his his sister. That's my sister. I'm telling you that right now. That's my sister. I love her to death. Like I've developed genuine relationships with his family, and it's funny how doing shows of this nature can do that. Cause I'm a very private. Um, guarded person you know I don't let people in easily but on this journey when you do things of this nature and people know it comes from the heart they kind of trust you and they stick to you and they make sure that you're fine and make sure that you're okay and that's the type of person that I am also that's reciprocated I'm a very genuine um, kind-hearted person you know I get people told all the time but I'm when they when they when they wrong now i have to have my coffee i am a mcdonald it's hot outside and i be wanting my mcdonald's coffee i cannot drink anything other than mcdonald's coffee now i when now when i was in florida they had some um i was drinking some coffee called cafe the cafe something demand or some i went about and got it in kroger that coffee was so good. That coffee so good. It don't make no sense. I'm going to tell you that right now. Hey, Marvin Bailey. I am a coffee fanatic. Tori, Tora, Tori, what you doing? I'll pay you. Come up here and help me out. That's my cousin. She be helping me out. And here's the thing. She'll come up here and help me out. And then I, she won't even say nothing. I'll be trying to pay her. She won't. Oh, girl, I don't want to. Come up here, Tora, and help me if you ain't got nothing to do. And um, I'm crazy. But the, my cousins know me. But, um... But yeah, hey love, you doing okay? You always log on too. Thank you for logging on to my lives. I appreciate it. I be appreciating y'all logging on to my lives while I go on and on. Because I be going from one subject to the, like I be jumping from one thing to the next. I promise you, I be forgetting sometimes what I'm talking about. Because I'll remember that I'm supposed to talk about something else and then I'll jump on to something else. But this is mostly fun today though. This is mostly fun today. But, um, but yeah, I, I may start doing some lighthearted shows, you know, I've thought about, I guess because for me, like, um, I have some ideas about some more shows. <laughs> I kind of hate to put it out there in the atmosphere right now, but I've kind of had some ideas about some more shows, like some lighthearted shows. Oh, you enjoy, you a Leo. Team Leo. Team Leo. But um I think more people want to hear about relationships. Like we can I'm I'm thinking about having like experts to come in to talk about relationships. I guess I can't be no expert on no relationship. The only thing I I, I think I'm an expert in <laughs> is walking away from relationships. I don't know if that's bad or uh uh that's my sister birthday august the 16th um okay torah all right miss torah since you don't want to come up here and help your cousin whatever when you finish you need to come up here and help me i'll pay you. um look at me popping my mouth <clears throat> But I guess the only thing that I'm really good at is like, um, is walking away from relationships. And I don't know, look at me, I don't even talk about my private life, but I, I guess I need to be a little transparent. But I don't know if that's a, I don't, I don't know if that's good or bad. 
I don't know if that's good or bad, you know, consistently walking away. Hey, Arthur Wallace, walking away from relationships. So I kind of want to start getting some experts on because um, I see people that have been married for years. And believe it or not, I do want to be those persons, but I don't want to be married for convenience. You know, I don't want to be in a marriage where as I'm miserable, there has to be more ups and downs. And I know a lot of people are selfish. Now, this is just plain selfishness when people say, well, my marriage is on the down because, you know, my wife's sick or my husband's sick. That's not that's not down. I feel like it's unfortunate if a person becomes sick. But when you vow to love a person, if they're sick, as long as they're there with you, that's no down. I don't know. Maybe I'm naive. I just I just believe in love and happiness. You know, and I know you can't be happy 24-7, but I just still believe in true love. You know, I still believe in true love. I don't know if that's just hopefulness or, or naivety. I don't know. I don't know. But I, see, I do see couples that say, I've been married for 30 years um, or 20 years, and... You know, we've had our ups and downs, but we've had more ups. Okay, I understand that because we all got some little bipolar ways. I promise you. I likes to go and look at the trees and I have to go meditate by myself. So I can't have a man that's sensitive like that um, or he all sensitive. He mad because I want to go meditate or I want to I want to go look at the trees and drink my coffee or something like that, because I like to think. I'm a thinker, and I'm a creator. I create. I like to create stuff. So I do that better when I'm by myself, and all I need is just a little time by myself, because I'm going to tell you something. I, I can cut up bad if I can't have my little time. I need some time to recuperate. But when you're when you're with somebody, and there have been more downs, and, and then it's just you're with that person for convenience. I don't know, y'all. To me, that's like a prison. I don't know. It's 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 like a it's like a that's a prison to me. You know, I just don't. I just don't believe. And I've never been married, so I don't. I, maybe it's easy for me to say. You know, because I hear people say, "Well, I ain't walking away from something that I've built," or "I ain't walking away from this. I ain't walking away from that." And it ain't nothing but hell in the house. I I can't. I don't live my life like that. I, I won't. I just, I can't live my life like that. A lot of people do, though. See, that's why it's good <clears throat> for each person to have their own stuff. Coming into it or their own, um, I think if you have your own things and your, like, even if you have, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um... You have not goals, but um, expertise and different stuff where you can go make money. You you don't end up staying in situations. Whereas you know, I don't know because seasons come and go. Sometimes people they may not like each other, and then their see the time if the time comes back around again, and they do. I don't know, y'all. I, I I just don't know. That's why I want to start getting like relationships relationship expert on experts on because I got it bad about walking away from relationships. Like if I feel like it's going left, I just I don't want to be around for nothing to get too bad. So I go well. Evidently, it's just not meant to be, and I leave. You know, I walk away, or you know, I in other other I have some other issues too you know sometimes I feel like in the past I'm talking about in the far far past nothing this year but like in the far far past I have gotten frightened and um ran off good guys because I was I, I was starting to like them so much it started to frighten me and I would just do crazy stuff to intentionally run them off and that's not a good way to be either so I want to get start getting some relationship experts to um because i have i'm gonna tell y'all something i have ran i have dated some awesome men i'm not gonna get on here and say all men dogs because i have dated some dogs some deceivers some liars everything but i have dated some awesome men that i ran off because of my fear 
of failure or of being hurt or insecurities. And that's the God's truth. And I think it takes a good woman to say that. Now, I'm, you know, they're going on those ones and they have other relationships and their women are blessed because I know because I was with them. But I know that as women, a lot of times we have issues that we're afraid to um, deal with. You know, or we don't deal with, or we want acknowledge. And I do know that I have some issues. And so that's why I've been journaling and asking God to help me because I do want to be married. I do. And I want to be good to my husband because I'm going to tell y'all something when I love, I love so hard. I, I love, I, I just do. I'm very loyal, but I don't want that fear to creep in. And then God sends me somebody good and I mess it up because of fear. I don't want that. I want to be able to nurture something that's healthy and continuously nurture and water it. I ain't talking about watering nothing dead. I think the issue is now people, too many people watering dead stuff. It's been dead. I got to do my fingernails because they cat ragged. They don't pay, no, pay them no attention. <clears throat> I got every color fingernail polish there is. I'm going to tell y'all something about me. I love fingernail polish because I'll paint my nails and then take it off and put on some more. Every time I go to Walgreens, I buy, if they got some new colors, I say, okay, I ain't got this color. I buy them all up. That's what I do. I just don't think, you know, the kind I like kind of stain my nails and I'm a stiletto heel fanatic. I love stiletto heels. Buying stiletto heels is so therapeutic for me. I want to show y'all some of my, I got some new heels. I don't think I've shown y'all these I wore. I think I had them all on my show today. I don't think y'all have seen the, these. They bad to the bone. They y'all know they buckling. It's a nine west. I love this shoe. I had on a yellow dress with it, and I put these on, and it made that yellow dress flat foot pop. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I got another shoe that I'm gonna wear on a show that's going to air. Um, I want to show it to y'all. I gotta come and fix my my light in my office, y'all. Don't be paying my office no attention. You, I know I always be saying my office be junky. I be paying people to come in here and, and straighten it up for me. That's why my cousin don't want to come up here. Yeah, it's a shame. I got shoes in the front room and I got shoes in my closet in my office. And I don't take them home because I got too many shoes um, in my house. That's another shoe right there. I be having an issue about stowing my shoes. I my shoes. Y'all, everything y'all hear is some shoes, y'all. It's like boxes of shoes. Okay, here they go. I ain't gonna show y'all my closet. Oh my God. I was wondering what this shoe was. I have not seen this shoe in forever. Look, I haven't worn this one yet. I wore it once. Well, I wore it one time. That's a bad shoe right there. That's a Michael Kors shoe. I got it. That's a bad one. I was wondering where it was. It's back here in my office. I like that shoe. I'm going to show y'all this one. This is the one I'm going to wear on set today. But I like to wear shoes. I like to buy heels because that's basically what I get to do for myself. Because I work so much. And it's therapeutic for me. Um, let me cover the girls up because you know I'm wearing this one today. On set. Ain't that a bad shoe? Lisa, isn't that a bad shoe? That is a bad that shoe is bad to the bone. That's one of my new ones. But I just got on here to chill out with y'all a little bit. And um, what was I talking about? Relationships, and I'm gonna start. In that shoe bag, girl, I am a, I like stiletto heels. Now, I, when I wear, I, I do buy flip flops now, but when I wear, I buy some, when I buy flip flops, they have to, they can't just be any flip flop. They got to be the cutest flip flop in the store. I don't really, I got maybe like three pairs of tennis shoes, gym shoes to work out in. That's it. I can keep them for years and they look brand new. I shouldn't have said that. They let y'all know I don't really want to use them to work out. But um, I don't really buy tennis shoes like that. <clears throat> I, I used to buy uh, Nikes to work out in, but I'm going to tell y'all something. 
I um I couldn't find my Nikes one day. I was like, God, I don't know what happened to my Nikes. Something, nothing but somebody walked off with them. That's all it was. Somebody came into the house and got them. Or them girls, one of my girls had them on probably. And so um, I ran over to the Sears and I was like, they ain't got no Nikes, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up getting me some Reeboks. Y'all, those Reeboks, um, I would never buy another shoe other than Reebok. That Reebok felt so good working out in, way better than a Nike. It was not tight at the end. I had a lot of room. It was just awesome, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all that right now. It was absolutely awesome. Hey, Tyree Blackhaven. But, Shalisa, I was saying earlier, I'm going to start getting, like, having shows talking about relationships. That'll help me some. Maybe I'll be able to keep somebody. And, um, but I guess the problem ain't keeping nobody. Well, yes, it is. It, it is. I, I, somebody's worth keeping because I don't have no problem with getting rid of somebody that ain't worth getting, you know, that ain't worth having. But as far as, like, nurturing a relationship or... Maybe just dating, because I'm not even really good. Hey, Tyree, I'm not even really good at dating. Like, I'm when I'm, I tell people all the time, like, when I get on my TV show and I get on here, I am, I'm going to be patient, because guys, are, you find so many men that are liars, they're deceptive, and I, you know, you would think that the older ones wouldn't be like that, but they're the main ones. But, what was I saying? But I am going to be patient because <clears throat> when you have so much going on, people kind of like creep in. You really, you really have to do your investigation on people. You, you, you hate to be like that, but you really do have to do that. And then you don't want anybody in your space. When God is starting to, when God is blessing you and you have a lot to lose and you have, a, and especially when there's a calling on your life, I'm being serious now. You have to be very, very careful. And I've always been very meticulous. That's why I didn't, I never dated a lot. Um, I was always very meticulous about what I brought around my children. My girls were the most important thing. And I didn't bring different guys around my children. I just didn't. I was very careful about that. Even those guys that I was serious with, I was never the type of mom to leave and leave my boyfriend in the house with my girls. Mm -mm. Give a boyfriend a key. Hey, Miss Wanda Taylor. Hey, beautiful. Um, give a man a key and he could walk in and my girls, you know, there. that's subjecting them to danger because you don't ever know what a person may think. You may think you know a person. People will try to make you feel bad by saying, well, you ought to know them. You don't ever know what a person thinking. You don't know what goes through their mind. You think you know them, but a lot of stuff, you know, most times you don't know them. So my main priority was always to keep my children safe. Because I was not going to have no Negro coming up into my space doing anything to my children. That would not have been conducive to my kids for me to have to go away because somebody has done something to them. You know, that, that wouldn't have been conducive to, to me raising my girls. So that's why I tell mothers, be very, very careful about, right, Wanda, they are. Be very, very careful about who you bring around your children. Um, you, you just have to be careful about that. Some people are so selfish, they put their own needs or wants, because a lot of them don't need nothing. A lot of them had so much sex that they, they don't never have sex no more. They, they ain't even got to have it. They would be good, but th so it's not a need, it's just a want. They put their own wants before the, the, the um, stability, of their children um, before putting their children in healthy atmospheres. And even with my oldest being 20 and my youngest being 17, I still don't play about my kids. I still don't. Um, I think women should watch guys because my girls are very, very beautiful. You bring men around your, if you think, you, you, now I'm not talking about bring, start bringing somebody up in your house that you've been knowing for two weeks. You know, they moving men in in two weeks. Oh, how you, how long you been knowing him? Six weeks? We go, <laughs> I don't even want to talk about it. But that's not even enough time for you to even know him. Why are you going to be bringing him to your house around your children? Um, 
endangering your kids. I've always been very meticulous. Always been very meticulous about that. I just don't play about them. I think when you do get comfortable enough with the guy, if you've been knowing him a while and you have children, even little boys, because they we want the little boys too. You thinking he wants you, he want your little son. You know, um, you should watch him when he's not watching you or he don't know that you're watching him to see how he's going to be looking at your children because you could tell what a person is up to about how they, they shouldn't be looking at your, your girls in certain ways. You know, but sometimes as women, women will, will neglect um, what they know is. They'll, they, they'll ignore that. And so as a result, they're putting, they put their children in danger. And I think that's the reason why, because so much like sexual molestation and rape and things of that nature is going on now, it's ridiculous. And it messes a person up. You hear a lot of women who are abusing drugs, who are mentally messed up, who have had nervous breakdowns and things of that nature. A lot of times, alcoholics, it traces back to their childhood. And if they trust you enough, they'll sit down and tell you, I was raped and molested, nobody believed me, this, this, and that. They will tell you that. And so that's why I say it's up to the parents to protect their children. And the fathers too, because most households are single parents. That's why I tell these men, they need to stop being sorry suckers. If you don't want a woman, put a condom on. Because if you don't put a condom on, surely you got to know you're going to have a baby. You you're subject to get her pregnant. And so if you don't want her and there's a baby, that's still your child. Well, I never wanted her. You know, we're so quick to annihilate the woman. That's why I tell women, we got to stop being bitter. You know, I hear girls say all the time, well, I had met him and he said he never wanted her. She got pregnant to keep him. And she mad because he won't take care of that baby. As women, we should not even tolerate nothing like that. We don't care. We shouldn't care what the circumstances are. We shouldn't care what the circumstances are. If he wants to be with me, he's got to be taking care of his responsibility. Because if he don't take care of his own blood, he ain't got no loyalty to me. If he ain't got no loyalty to his own children, how can he have loyalty to me? I don't want nothing like that. And so we can hold them responsible by saying, well, look, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, I don't want to be with you anyways. I don't care what the circumstances was of him, of, of how he got that child, you know, even if, you know, whatever the circumstances were, you know, that's still his child. And if he can't, if, if, if you have, because some women don't even want their, the men to take care of their children. They don't, because to them, that's loyalty to them if he neglects his child. Some women are so jealous like that. That's, that's not right. So there could never be any goodness around that relationship because you're neglecting, you, you're promoting neglecting an innocent person. And that's just not cool. So I, I watched that very thing too. You know, um, um, I was listening to a young lady who was talking about how her um, boyfriend had went and got a, um, a baby on the outside because they had been together for years had children and he went and got a baby on the outside of their relationship and she was sitting up bragging and he don't do nothing for that baby like he be doing for my kids and i'm thinking to myself you've got to be the stupidest chick i've ever laid my eyes on see i don't deal with women like that because that's a bitter woman and so as long as he don't as long as he's doing that child wrong his own blood in front of her because if she could look at him with his no good stuff she ought to be able to look at them look at that child that's an innocent child of course it may hurt but you cannot do innocent people wrong because it's just not that child's fault you know so like i say as women hey um robert jimerson and margaret austin as women we got to start thinking better than what we think you know we'll let you know we think loyalty is mistreating um, their children or mistreating or them cheating, but making the other woman look bad. That's not, that's, that's, no. Mm -mm. Whereas if we made these, you know, he, the, the issue is always the cheating person. That, that's the issue, you know. And then, like I say, went ladies now, we can stop it. If we don't allow them to do it, if you know somebody is involved with somebody else, tell them, I'm not going to mess around with you. 
You should have an issue with playing second to any woman. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not playing second to no other woman. So if somebody has somebody and he's trying to be with me, that means that he's he doesn't have any integrity anyways. And once he gets comfortable with me, he'll go on to another woman. Or if he leaves that woman for me, then my old position is open. So he gonna have him another side chick. So we should not, we need to start having respect for self and start respecting other people's relationships. You know, um, I don't care what kind of issues you have and you talk about you, you gonna leave, holler at me in a year. Because if he leave in a month, he probably gonna go back. You know, we don't get, we, we, we gotta stop being desperate and we gotta start having self-respect as well as respect for others because what you put into the atmosphere is gonna come back to you. You start messing with somebody and you know that they got somebody, this stuff is gonna come back on you. I don't know about you, but I don't want that. I don't want things of that nature to come back on me. I want for God to send me my own husband and I want him to be a good man. I, I want to know that even if he was to try to step out, that there are women just like me that would say, nah, you got somebody brother, step. See, a person can't do it any more than what you allow them to do. You could simply say no. You know, you could simply say no. So there's got to be some accountability on both ends. I said I wanted somebody to, and because I'm telling you now, it don't feel good to be cheated on because I've been cheated on in relationships. I've been cheated on in relationships, and that's why I'm very sensitive. And ladies, you ought to be offended if a man has somebody and he's sitting up trying to and trying he trying to coach you. I mean, a side chick position is too low of a grade for any woman. That's what you ought to tell them. That you, you're trying to put me in that position. That's too low of a grade. I'm way too qualified to be a side chick. Nigga, Nick Rowe, you better step. That's what you need to tell him. You know, you ought to be offended because he thinks of you as a side chick. Nah, I'll, I'll pass on that one. That, 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 you ought to cuss him out, as a matter of fact. Because one thing for sure, if a person is unhappy, one thing about men, they don't have issues with leaving if when they're unhappy. We'll stay because we've been taught to be loyal, to nurture our family. We'll stay in stuff where we know we're miserable in. But first opportunity come and they feel like that situation can equate to what they're in, they gone. They ain't happy. Yep. So ladies, we got to do better. We got to stop hurting other women too. We got to stop wanting to. I never thought I would live to see the day where so many women, there's so many damaged, hurt women, they get gratification out of hurting other women. They get gratification out of that. I don't. I don't get anything out of hurting another woman. I just, I can't. I don't want to, I don't want to be the cause of that. I don't ever want to be the cause of, of, of another woman being hurt. That's, that's just not part of my nature. Because I know the seeds that I sow has to grow. So I can't be a part of that. I'll wait for God to send me who he has for me. And I know when he sends me who he has for me, it will be something that's built on a, um, a stable foundation. You know, you have to do things right. You have to do it right. Yep, yeah, so... I said all that to say this. I, I wanna. I think I'm gonna start getting like relationship experts on my show because I think a lot of women wanna. There are a lot of women like me. For y'all just logging on, I said I had all these issues in the past, you know, um, with guys, and of course I have met some awesome guys that I'm. I just completely was fearful of. Maybe I don't know if I was fearful. Of, I was just fearful of failure. Not the commitment, because I wanted the commitment, but I was just fearful of failure of what I was feeling not being reciprocated. And so I act a fool. And one thing about a guy that's got a lot going on, that's really a, a, a solid good guy, he ain't going to stay around for no foolishness. He ain't. He, he going to say, you too bipolar, especially if it happens too many times. <laughs> because I used to date this guy, and Lord knows I liked him. Awesome guy, had a lot going on just very successful and i would get very insecure and i would have outbursts not in front of nobody but like in private 
or on the phone, I, I just would. And I guess I would do it because I wanted him to rebuff whatever insecurity I was feeling. And so he would say, he had said to me a couple of times, you know, you had a, um, God, oh, he would call them episodes. He says, you know, you had an episode again the other day. I'm not going to tolerate that. And so, and I was like, um, okay, I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. And then, like, I remember the last time I did it, he said, you know, I think that you're wonderful, but you got some issues. I cannot deal with you. I, I really would like to be with you, but I, can, I can't be with you because you, 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 you got some issues that you need to deal with. And that hurt my soul because I really did like him. And, and I knew he was serious. That was his last time. He said, I cannot deal with your insecurities, like the stuff you're conjuring up in your head, you know, all because you saw me talking to somebody, I'm a businessman, you know, or you, my phone is ringing. I'm a, he owned his own businesses, you know, but I felt like because of past things that had happened to me that that was that. So that was a good one that I lost. Yep. So I'm sure a lot of women, um, you know, because of past things, we do. We mess up some good stuff. And it's easy for us, for me to get on here and say, well, all men are dogs. All men are dogs. All men are dogs. There are definitely some good men out there. Well, Miss Samantha, I don't want him back. That's <laughs> that's been a long time ago. I've grown since then. You know, things change. The seasons come and go. I don't. I don't. I don't know if I would want him back. I'm. I'm. I'm past. And once I get past stuff, because I was very deeply distraught, but I'm past it now. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Samantha. Once I get past stuff, I kind of like don't revisit it, especially if it, it, it hurt me in the past. I just kind of, okay, I, I don't want to revisit that no more. But he's a cool guy. He is. He's a wonderful guy. I just don't want him back no more. But I'm going to get off of here because I got, I think I got on here, y'all. I have jumped and talked about so much. But, yeah, I'm going to start doing some lighthearted shows, too, to talk about relationships because I want to learn more about, you know, um, I don't know. I, th I think a lot of people want to know more about, you know, healthy relationships and things of that nature. Because like I said, um, I've got issues too. And so a lot of it is I just got to ask God to, um, thank you, Miss Samantha. I love you too. And I'm asking God to do the same thing. Because one thing for sure, like when the very, a lot of times, you know, y'all know I talk about you create your reality. And the very thing that you fear, that's the very thing that will happen oftentimes. Hey, Miss Baptist, that's the very thing that will happen. And when you're afraid that somebody will do something to you, if you're constantly thinking about that, that's what you're creating. And I don't want to um, cause any man that's a good man any um, unpeacefulness when he, you know, especially if he's sent to me by God because of my insecurities. I don't ever want to do that because there are some good men, you know, that are providers, they're faithful, they're, they're just good guys. And I have met a few that I ran off, you know, and, and I, I guess I'm, 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 I don't want to do that anymore. Um, I was talking to my dad, um, a couple weeks ago about this and what not verbatim like what i'm saying on here and i was like you know dad you know sometimes i just feel like you know people misunderstand me and i was just kind of feeling sorry for myself and he said oh okay um you feel like everybody misunderstands you i said yeah and i said even i said especially in relationships he said oh okay he said so has it been that way with every relationship? I said, yeah. He said, oh, okay. So it's been that way with every relationship, huh? So you think it's them misunderstanding you or do you think it's something wrong with you? And I said, well, dad, you know, he said, and he started laughing. He said, so maybe you need to look at yourself. And um, 
And that's true. There's some things I'm going to work on. Because I run my, it's easy, like, with real men, they're not going to let you run them. And believe it or not, I like for real men to take charge. Like, I was dating this guy, and he was so, like, a real man. And so he believed in handling everything. Like, he was good with his hand. I love men that know how to fix stuff. Oh, I Jesus, don't let him be in the garden. Using his hands or fixing a car or... Uh, or fixing some nailing something some cutting chop i just i love me i love country men i i was i was laughing about um my friend was saying we was talking about cadillac records y'all get ready to trip out on this we was talking about cadillac records and um she was saying that she some guy on there was handsome i said you would never believe who was handsome to me and she said who i said wolf he looked like a country, a big old country, Jethro looking man that be in his overalls that get out there and, and chop wood. And I just, I love men and know how to fix stuff. That's real good. Yes, good in the garden. Like, I don't like no pritzy man that's scared to get his hands dirty. Don't know how to, you can't say, well, baby, it's something going on with my car. He, he, he too crazy. To, he don't know nothing. You, I mean, you don't, you should, the plumber, call in a plumber or if something happens in your house, call in the professionals in if you got a real man. That's the last resort because he's been taught how to do everything. But he was the type of man that knew how to do stuff, right? Like he was just, he was just a, a, a type A personality. We clashed a lot, but I liked him. I, for some reason, I used to like to get him upset because it, it was just real good when he was upset because he would really show his authority, right? And so I said, um, I was telling him I was something that I needed. He was like, well, I'll get it. I, I got it. I, I'm going to take care of it. That's what he would always say. I'm going to take care of it. And so I would say, well, you know, if you do it this with baby, I, I'm going to take care of it. I would say, but if you do it, baby, just hush. I'm going to take, don't tell me how to do it. He said, you just can't help yourself. And there's a lot of women like me, especially when you're single and you've been used to making stuff happen the majority of the time for yourself. We just don't know how to back off. And real strong, real men that have been taught to be providers and things of that nature, they don't like that. They don't like for you to tell them how to do nothing because they feel like you're trying to rip their manhood away. I don't want to rip no manhood away. I like I like real men. So I have ran up on a lot of real men because they show enough to be providers. I'm going to tell you that right now because I ain't going to have them if they ain't. But I have, because of my insecurities, I've ran them away and my strong personality. You know, because sometimes you could say stuff that um, you don't even have to say. Why annihilate the poor guy? Especially if he's a, a good man. Most strong men have type A personalities. Yes, indeed, Miss Samantha, I'm telling you now. I like them Jethro, those big Jethro. If that was a point in time that I went through a season where I liked a guy that was kind of not, that was stalky, like that was real thick, big and tall. But I, and I still do. He be out there with some overalls on, painting the house, or I just like to see him fix something. Go fix the doorbell. Oh my God, or go garden. Oh, you, oh. Jesus Christ, go hang something. That's just, that's so manly to me. I love it. And the reason I think I crave it is because you don't see that as much anymore. There's a lot of these men too doggone sorry now. I don't know what's being breeded. I think a lot of women have gotten so desperate too that they're allowing these men to be little girls. They 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 just want to put them up somewhere. As long as I got me a, as as the man said, as long as I got me a man, I'm just gonna wa watch him and put him up and take care of him. No real man wants to see a woman out slaving and and not doing anything. I'm telling you that now. I mean, working hard and being stressed out, and he's sitting at the house looking at soap operas, and that's what's going on now. A whole lot of men be sitting at home looking at soap operas. And these women let him do it. Uh, he, she come in. Let me tell you about what happened on the stories today. Who wants something like that? Not me. I, I don't. He can't do nothing for me but get on away from me as far as he can go. I ain't mean to get on here and start preaching about that, child. I don't even know who's left on here. 
I know our candy more is left over here. That's my boo. It's somebody else on here too. But I got a show to do, y'all. It's six o'clock, and I gotta do a little editing because I want to get away from here kind of early. It's already late. And okay, Mr. Mantha, you are on here. <clears throat> but I thank y'all for coming on. So sometimes people don't click on and okay you take care too Mr. Mouth I'm gonna do these shows and then I'm going to um I'll probably go home and rest oh um, let me say this Miss Deborah Miss Deborah Faith Taylor and she's got a show on my network on 31 Wings of Love she's also a nutritionist I'm going to, like, we're getting ready to start my weight loss journey. Because, y'all, I told y'all I was eating cupcakes. And I felt terrible. Like, this food got something in it to make you feel so horrible. And I felt terrible eating those bad foods. Like, my head was hurting. My eyes was jumping. I had not eaten bad foods like that in a very long time. And so, I hurry up and did, and did a, I started my cleansing process, okay? And she's a nutritionist. And so, um, we're getting ready to start my waist, weight loss journey. I actually started doing good today. I actually did. I boiled me two eggs or whatever because, you know, eggs is full of proteins. It helps to burn fat and because um, I don't eat meat, you know, other than fish. And um, I'm cutting out a lot of the other stuff like the carbs and things like that. And we're going to start working out a couple times a week. So I'm ready to get back to my natural weight y'all so yep well our candy more let's see mr math is still on here yeah but anyways y'all i think i've talked enough about relationships and um i guess i was supposed to get on i told y'all i'd be all over the place sometimes we were just on here talking right but i'm gonna talk with y'all later okay bye